I don't know if you have ever been a landlord before. Everybody that I've ever talked to about being a landlord has always told me, don't do it. Just don't do it. Because being a landlord is tough business. Three o'clock in the morning, landlord come and fix the toilet. Two o'clock in the morning, landlord come and fix the heater. Five o'clock in the morning, landlord come and fix the air conditioner. You're always having to do that kind of stuff when you're a landlord. Of course, on the other side of that, we also have tons and tons of stories about slumlords too. You ever heard of those? Slumlords said they don't, fix the, they don't fix the air conditioning, they don't fix the heater, they don't fix the water heater, they don't fix anything, they're just slumlords. It seems to me that there is a challenge in we humans when it comes to things that we don't have any skin in the game over. When we don't have what my mama used to call pride of ownership. You've seen it happen before. In fact, our country is littered with the, with the best of intentions, housing projects where they have tried to give low income, low income families housing projects and they live in the projects. You ever been by the projects before? I used to be a police officer. We had the projects. Guess where most of the trouble was? Guess where most of the people wanted to get away from? That's it. They wanted to get out of there because when there's not a pride of ownership, when there's no skin in the game, when you're just a bystander and you've been given things, I don't care how many times I hear this story, it rings true every time that men and women who have been given things in their lives never fully appreciate it as much as folks who've earned it. Does that make sense to you? That's exactly right. And over and over again, we humans have proven that true over and over and over again. Why, all I have to do is uh, mention to my children that it's time to put their technology away. And, well, let's just say things get exciting. And I asked him, I asked one time, I asked my precious, glorious daughter, I said, who got that iPad for you? Well, you did. I said, well, why? You've got to take care of it because it seems like it, it's forever. I'm asking one of them, where's your iPad? I don't know. I don't know. And it's okay. It's just what happens. That's what kids do. But part of being a grown-up, part of maturing, is learning how to appreciate what you have and take care of it. And when there's no sense of ownership... When there's no sense of any skin in the game, when there's no sense that you actually are part of the things that you're doing, you're going to look at that as less as important than other things in your life where you do feel a sense of ownership, where you do feel a sense of connection. Our gospel lesson today gives us that story uh, in uh, no uncertain terms. But my question to you this morning is this. How do we transition? Because the fact of the matter is, there are things in your life where you feel ownership over. And folks, trust me, this is a hard lesson to hear, but it's really true. What you genuinely care about, I want you to listen to me now. What you genuinely care about, you care for. What you genuinely care about, you care about. What you genuinely care about, you invest your best resources in. You invest your best time. You invest your best finances. You take care of it. I have a buddy of mine who owns a 1964 red Ford Mustang convertible. Now, folks, that man loves that car. I mean, that man loves that car. Like, for instance, today, there is no way in the world that car is coming out of the garage today. Why? There's a cloud in the sky. And it may rain, but it may not. Doesn't matter. It may rain. And every week I see him, he'll pull up and we'll see each other, and he'll tell me what he's doing extra to the car. You know, I've gotten the new upholstery coming in next week. And, you know, I've gotten the original factory uh, uh, dial on the, on, the, on the dashboard that I've been looking for all this time. I paid $200 for it. I said, a, a, a little dial? Yep, yeah, 200 bucks. 
I said, man, that car is expensive. That's worth it. I love that car. And he dotes on that car and he polishes that car. He cares about that car. Why? Because that man values that automobile. That's the way it is in our life, folks. Whatever you truly love, whatever you truly value, whatever's the most important to you, you're going to give the most time to. You're going to invest the best energy that you have. You're going to invest even your time and talents and your treasures. What you truly love, you will care for because you have a sense of ownership. Of course, the tenants in our gospel lesson today didn't have that sense of ownership. And so they took great pride in thinking that they were going to take advantage of the master of the vineyard. So when it came time, because you see, the master of the vineyard invested all the money, invested all of the labor, invested all of the time to grow the vineyard, to dig the wine press, to put a tower in it, to put a hedge around the wine, to put a hedge around the, 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 the vineyard. And he got it all ready and he had to go off into business and he led his vineyard out to tenants. And the tenants, when the, when the fruit came, naturally the owner of the vineyard expected to get the fruit. He's the one who invested the time. He paid the tenants to do the work. He expected to get the results. And of course, you know, you know the story. The tenants, when the, when the servants came to get from the, from the owner, took, came to get the, the fruit, what did they do? They beat one, they killed the other, they stoned the other. Sent more servants, did the same thing to them. Finally, the master said, I'll send my son. They'll respect my son. And of course, what does the scripture say? They didn't respect his son. In fact, their hearts were so turned in on themselves that they said to themselves, uh, we will, here's the son, here's the heir, let's kill him and then we'll get the inheritance. Now, let me ask you a question. How completely disconnected from reality do you have to be to believe if we kill the owner's son, he's going to give us the inheritance? Does that, that just doesn't make any sense at all. And yet... In our own lives, we struggle over things that we say we value, but we don't show that we value them by our energies and by our time and by our efforts. We don't actually value them. We say we do, but we don't actually value them. And so when, they don't, when it doesn't turn out like we expect it to, we get upset. How, why, why didn't that work out like I wanted it to? I said I valued it. It's like me saying that I'm the, ba I'm the biggest Atlanta Falcons fan in the world. Oh, you are? Well, what do you think about the, the, about the quarterback? Oh, I don't know who that is. But I'm the biggest Falcons fan in the world. Oh, well, then you must have season tickets. Oh, no, I never go to the games. But I'm the number one Falcon fan in the world. Well, surely you watch them on tele TV. Oh, no, I'm busy on Sundays. I usually don't get a chance to watch them on television. But I'm the number one Falcon fan in the world. Well, of course, you see how ridiculous that is. And it's the same way, ladies and gentlemen, when we say with our mouths we value something and our actions do not back it up, we find ourselves living in the disconnected delusion of believing that when it comes time to reap, we should get the reward. But we haven't invested in it. We don't have a sense of ownership. We don't have a pride of ownership to it. And we've proven that by the way we've acted. And so when it comes time to reap the benefits, we're shocked when we don't get the benefit. This morning, I want to challenge you. Because you see, ladies and gentlemen, this very practical homily and this very practical scripture lesson is applicable to every aspect of our lives. It's the same way with our relationships. If you don't invest in your relationships, don't be surprised when they disappear. When you don't invest time and talent and treasures in your career, don't be surprised when you don't advance. When you don't invest in the things that you own and care for them and maintenance them, I am the world's worst at remembering to get my oil changed. To the point where I actually have a place that gets my oil that they put a little sticker on my window to remind me so that I'll look at it now and again because 
I, it just never dawns on me to get my oil changed. Well, if you don't do that pretty soon, the investment in your vehicle is going to go down. Same way with your, with your relationships, same way with your home, same way with your children, same way with your parish. When you are a bystander, don't, don't be surprised when you do not reap the benefits of those who invest their best in seeing the growth and the expansion and the livelihood of our community. A bystander will always be a bystander, but someone who has pride of ownership will reap the benefits that they have invested in seeing the kingdom of God grow in their relationships, in their home, in their business, and in their church. Pride of ownership. Giving your best to what's most valuable. This is the principle of success in life no matter where you are, no matter what you're doing. What is most valuable is worth your best time your best resources, your best life. The scripture ends today with a horrible indictment because you see the Lord Jesus is talking to a group of people who had had God's best for centuries. And they had squandered God's best by thinking their faith could be on automatic pilot so that when the Messiah, the one they had been waiting to find and waiting to hear for 6,000 years was standing in their very midst, they missed him. In fact, they killed the prophets and Jesus lets them know they're going to kill the son. And Jesus has these people indict themselves with their very words. What will the master do when he comes to these tenants? And out of their very mouths, these people who had done the very thing the story had talked about said, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and he will give his, vine, his vineyard to other tenants. Brothers and sisters, we will either value the treasure of our faith and put our best into it, or make no mistake about it, it will be given to others. May God protect us and give us the courage and the insight and the maturity to avoid such a fate. Because God promises us his best, we can never give him anything less than that. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.